أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين اللهم يسر ولا تعسر رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل وقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد All praise you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him and glorify him We send our salutations to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our discussion today will be very simple, easy, very short as well. Our discussion today is taking us to the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are going in the house of the Prophet and look at some of the teachings that he got to his companions. We are knocking the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're going to knock the doors asking for him to open and let's see what sort of lifestyle he sallallahu alayhi wasallam had because the idea here is um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum Allah if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you have to follow me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you so our, our journey today will take us to the house of the Prophet. We're going to look at some few examples of his life and see how best we can practice in our life, inshallah. <coughs> we start with the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which says, أَحَبُّ النَّاسُ إِلَى اللَّهِ the beloved of people in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love most are those that are beneficial, those that are helpful to each other. So when we think of our life and we see how are we beneficial to the community in which we live in, the people that we are living in with, are they happy with us? Are we beneficial to the people? That is the starting point because for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love you, you have to be someone who others benefit from. So it is very important to start our discussion from there. And the Prophet continued to say, وَأَحَبُّ لَأَعَمَالُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ سُرُورٌ تَدْخُلُهُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ أو عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ and the most beloved action that is in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love most is the joy <clears throat> that you put in someone. So when you are able to put joy and happiness in someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love us to be beneficial but also he loves to see us putting joy and happiness in others. So it is very important to put joy and happiness in other people. So those are the actions that are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the Prophet ﷺ continued to give us this information. for anhu Or one of the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves is to take the distress that someone is going through. So if someone is going through stress, you are able to take the person out of that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. We finish this action, then we look at the opposite of that. Because if Allah loves this and you are doing the opposite of that, what will that mean in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Naam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi continued to say, Aw taqda anhu dayna. Not only you are able to help such a person, 
but also you help someone to pay their debt. When you are able to pay someone to pay their debt, this, an, this is an action Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a lot. Or tatrud anhu ju'a, or you help a person to go out of um, hunger. So if you are able to supply food, you are able to help others with food, that will help us, or that will help that person, then definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then said, وَلِأَنْ أَمْشِي مَا أَخِ الْمُسْلِمْ فِي هَاجَةً أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ أَعْتَقِفْ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ الشَّعْرَةً the Prophet said, if I get a fellow Muslim, a Muslim brother that has some concern or that have some thing that he needs help with, for me to walk with such a person to help that person is better for me than to make a itikaf in the masjid for one month. Remember, an itikaf, the reward of an itikaf is amazing. And the Prophet ﷺ said, it's better to be able to walk with a fellow Muslim brother to go and help them in some of their activity or some of their lifestyle concerns. The Prophet ﷺ said, it's better for me to do that than to make an itikaf one month in the masjid. Someone will say, Wallahi, I want to make ibadah. Sit in the, month for, uh, sit in the masjid for one month making an itikaf. The Prophet ﷺ said, the reward is massive, but to walk with your fellow Muslim brother to help him in his affairs, the reward you get is better than the itikaf that you do for a month. Dear respected brothers, the Prophet ﷺ continued to give us information on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. وَمَنْ كَفَّ غَضَبِهِ and also satar Allahu awra. And whoever is able to protect someone or take someone from anger, someone is in anger and you are able to take him out or you are even able to protect the person from falling into anger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your mistakes or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your sins. Wamin kathmil ghayth The same thing applies to when someone is able to regulate one's anger, you are able to help the person when they are in the difficult situation, you are able to advise them or counsel them so that they get out of that. When you do that, the Prophet ﷺ is talking about the reward is massive. And also, if you are able to spend and on such a person, on whatever their needs are, you are able to spend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with you on the day of Qiyamah, which means he's going to put uh, happiness in your heart. وَمَنْ مَشَى مَا أَخِيهِ الْمُسْلِمِ فِي هَاجَتِهِ حَتَّى يُثْبِتَهَا لَهُ أَثْبَتَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَدَمَهُ يَوْمَ تَزَلُّ الْأَقْدَامِ Whoever walked with his brother in his affairs until he is able to help him go through those activities or whatever that person needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help this person on the day of Qiyamah, give him steadfastness when the day that people cannot stand on their feet. The Prophet said, indeed, uh, bad actions or bad character indeed spoils one's deeds. Kema yafsudul khallu al asal. Just like the way um, vinegar spoils uh, honey. So let's quickly go back to this hadith and look at what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us on this hadith. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us some sort of things that when we do, the reward are massive. But sometimes we underestimate those actions. All right? Number one, he said to us, the most beloved amongst you are those that are beneficial to the others. 
So wherever you find yourself, the first question is to ask, who is benefiting in your life? Who do you support? Who do you help? How is your life beneficial to the people around you? How is your life beneficial to the society in which you live? How, how is your life beneficial to the country that you live in? Because we need to support the countries in which we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those that are beneficial. Are we beneficial to the people that are living with us? From the family that we have, from the friends, the community, the society in which we are. Are we beneficial to them? Because if we are, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us for that. <clears throat> then the Prophet also talked about actions, deeds that are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, for you to put happiness <clears throat> and joy in the heart of a brother Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the action of you being able to put happiness in your fellow brother's heart. Whatever that you can do to make sure that you create the happiness, the joy in your fellow brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this action. If that is the case, what of if you are the one that cause harm? What of if you are the one that creates sadness and sorrow in people's life? Then the same thing, as Allah will love the good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will dislike you being the one who puts sadness in other people's life. And that can lead you to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet wasallam then continued to tell us about the actions that a person when he does, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happier. And he said, if you are able to help person who is in distress, who is in the state of uncomfortable, you are able to help such a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes such an action. And also, if someone is in debt and you are able to help the person pay it, Whatever you do in a way that you support the person to pay the debt, this is an action, this is an action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so much. <clears throat> or you fed someone for you to cook or to give food or to help somebody with money for the person to eat. The Prophet wasallam said, these are actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so much. We can understand where Mubarak brought this idea, where we got a place where always there's something to eat. These are the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ regarding being able to feed someone who is hungry. And the Prophet ﷺ continued to say, for him, he will prefer to walk with his fellow brother in Islam for the persons to go and, you know, fulfill some of their you know, their actions or their, their affairs. He said it's better for him than making a itikaf in the masjid for a month. So that is to tell you, when you see a fellow brother who needs help, and you go into that to support the person, you are indeed doing a big job or something that is really massive in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continue, to say the same thing applies to when you avoid anger on your fellow brother or you support your fellow brother who is in anger for him to get out of it. And the Prophet ﷺ said the same thing applies to when you spend on your fellow brother. If you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fill your heart with the best of desire, which is that um, <coughs> trust and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for you on the day of Qiyamah. And the same thing applies to if you walk with your fellow brother who is in some situation until you help the person achieve whatever they are going through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support you on the day of Qiyamah. And he said regarding this, the words of character really spoils one's deed like the way the vinegar spoils uh, the honey. 
So in a nutshell, the Prophet Sallallahu is someone who does put happiness in people. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is someone who puts joy in people. He is someone who gives glad tidings. And we're going to look at just two or three examples in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding putting joy or giving glad tidings to people. Because this is this hadith saying that you first of all have to be beneficial to the people or you should also put joy and happiness in people's life. So let's look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu As we said, our journey today is in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves so much to give glad tidings. He always, in all his affairs, he wants to make sure that the people around him are happy. That is why the Quran indicates the job of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he does not come and scare people and give people bad news, but rather Bashiran wa Nadira. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will give glad tidings, then he gives warning. So we need to look at it from that point of view. <clears throat> Number one, there is hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that goes like this. Ata Jibreer, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqal ya Rasulallah, Hadihi Khadija. Jibreel came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, Oh Messenger of Allah, there or that is Khadija, your wife. She is coming to you now with your dinner or with your food or with whatever that you're going to take. When she comes to you, give her the glad tidings, greetings from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Fakra alayha salam min rabbiha azza wa jal wa minni. Give her good news or greetings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tell her also Jibreel alayhi salam is greeting her. But not only that, inform her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said we should inform her her castle, the place she is going to be in Jannah has been completed. What a good news. Imagine Khadija at that time. It's not about whether am I going to Jannah or not. No. Your dwelling place in Jannah is finished. You are just here to inform you your place in Jannah, everything, had the decoration is done. This is a good news. The Prophet ﷺ was happy to inform his wife about this news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we made mention, it's good at any given time when you hear something good to rush to inform your brother or sister in Islam. It is simple as you read the Quran. In the Quran, you saw something good that one can do to achieve good reward. The moment you meet your brother or sister in Islam, you sit them down and inform them about that advantage so that they can take advantage and get more reward in front of Allah. It's not about, I want to go to Jannah and everyone should go to Jahannam. It's not about, I should win, everyone should lose. No. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is saying, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يهب لأخيه ما يهب لنفسه None of you will be a true believer unless you love for your brother what you love for yourself. So if I really read the Quran and saw some information that would be beneficial for my brother or my sister, wouldn't I be the first one to quickly inform them so that they can also achieve and get better reward. So the Prophet Sallallahu his job is Bashiran. He always gives good news. He gives good news. He is not someone who come and scare you about Allah. Some people, when you sit down in front of them, you will hate being a Muslim. There are some scholars, they cannot talk to you about the Rahmah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whenever they start talking, they're only talking about the punishment of Allah, punishment of Allah, and forget all the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying regarding his mercy, his mercy has overshadowed his anger. But some people cannot talk about Allah without putting fear in people's life. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, you should be a person who gives glad tidings Good news. 
So here, when he heard the news, he rushed in telling his wife this good news. Remember, he told the same to his wife Aisha. One of the battles when they were at the expedition, when Aisha was telling us this story, at that time she was at the age of 16 or 17 years old. Generally, when they go or travel, she will be in a some, something like a palanquin. She sits in there and the companions will hold it. Remember, very skinny, she's not heavy. So four people holding that thing, sometimes they don't even know whether she's in or not. They reached a place where it was at night. They slept over. She got up, went in the bush to help herself when she came back. And then got in, she realized she lost her necklace and she decided to go back and look for it. None of them saw her leaving. So when it was time to go, the companions left and then they left. She came back, no one was there, everyone has left. There she said, well, since they left, I will be waiting here. I cannot be walking in this desert looking for them. Where they reached also, the companions who were holding the distance said that, Ya Rasulullah, we cannot feel the movement of our mother Aisha in this. So they put it down. The Prophet ﷺ came and opened. She was not in. So he said, let's camp here, wherever she is. Since she went without telling anyone, we wait for her here. here. She was also there. She said, since they left without me, I'm not walking. They should come and pick me here. So they are camping there. She's also at where they left her. Generally, when they camp, there's one of the companions with the name Safwan. He will be behind to go around and see if someone left something and then pick it up. Safwan is a young guy. Safwan came back and he saw Aisha sitting where they were. And he decided to let her mount on his camel and they walked back. Before they got to Medina, everyone, Roma in Medina. Safwan, the wife of the Prophet, ah, something has happened. They create Roma. Well, when they came back to Medina, for about 20 days, Aisha was sick. So Aisha has no idea in Medina they were even talking bad about her. The Prophet Wasallam hears what is going on. He cannot affirm it. He cannot also deny it. He is waiting for Allah to send message. Allah ignored him. 20 days. Aisha's sickness got a bit further. She decided she has to go to her parents. So coming out within the distance, she heard what's going on. She went to her fair parents. The house of Abu Bakr, for information, is not far from the Prophet's house. So she went back home. Her mom, her dad, they heard the news in Medina. Everyone is talking about it. Her parents asked her, Aisha, you heard what is going on? Is it true or not true? That made the sickness worse. She cannot say anything. Just crying. Almost a month. The Prophet ﷺ couldn't handle it. He came to the house of Abu Bakr. He wants to talk to his wife. He said, Aisha, this is the information in Medina. Tell me, did this happen so that you ask Allah to forgive you? Or you can free yourself by saying you did not do it. She looked at the Prophet ﷺ. Even you doubt me? I only wait Allah to send a revelation to free me. So she is making her dua, hoping that the Prophet ﷺ will see something in the dream. She is not expecting a verse to come because of her. But at least a dream will come for the Prophet ﷺ to know that she will not do such a thing. It took how many? More than a month before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent those verses in Surah to know Surah to know regarding those we don't want to go into details but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned people of making Romo and that's where the ruling of 
if someone says they found someone committing adultery or fornication, they need four witnesses. That is where the verses came. So up till today, till the day of Qiyamah, Allah has freed Aisha with the verses of Quran that will be recited till the day of Qiyamah. When the verses were revealed, the Prophet Sallallahu rushed to Aisha to inform her that Allah has freed her and Allah has proven her innocence. So he is someone who is always rushing in giving good news. When the verses came, he was so overjoyed, happy, wanting to let her wife, his wife know that Allah has shows, shows that she is innocent. And we can see more of this information of how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is when it comes to giving glad tidings. He gave good news to his companions saying they're going to Jannah. He is the one who gave good news to Abu Bakr. He said that Abu Bakr, Allah will open the eight doors of Jannah on the day of Qiyamah for you to choose anyone that you want to enter. He gave the good news to his companions and his nation to the extent the Prophet ﷺ is saying to the nation, Man mata ala tawheed fa innahu sayakunu min ahl al Jannah. Whoever in this nation died with the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincere belief will enter Jannah. Even if he has some bad deeds that Allah will punish him for that on the day of Qiyamah, he will still go to Jannah. His final abode will be Jannah. So he gave good news to his companions and to the nation knowing that as long as you have even small size of an atom of Iman in your heart, no matter how, no matter how worse you might be, commit whatever sin, even if you will be punished or put in Jahannam on the day of Qiyamah, because of that small Iman in your heart, you will end up in Jannah regardless. These are the good news the Prophet ﷺ gave to his companions and also his nation. The Prophet ﷺ continued to give some of the companions glad tidings of going to Jannah like Ashar al washirin bil Jannah. But not only that, he also made mention of specific people like the three people that he said they will be in Jannah like Ali and then Ammar and also Bilal. To the extent the Prophet ﷺ is telling Bilal, Ya Bilal, I heard your footstep behind me in Jannah. What a good news. You are still alive. And then you are getting the information that you are among people who are going to Jannah. So the Prophet ﷺ give good news. Now the question between us here is, do we also give good news or we are the angel of death? Anytime people see us, they know there's a bad news. The moment we call, they know there's a bad news. The moment we send a message, they know there's a bad news. We cannot get people and create joy and happiness in their life. So we need to change. Let's be like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we entered the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam today, what we saw him teaching his companions is giving glad tidings, giving good news, creating joy and happiness in the heart of people. This is what we saw in the house of the Prophet today. This is what we want to learn from today. We want to make sure that anywhere we go, we are among those who create joy and happiness in people's life. We want to be among those wherever we are, people feel comfortable. We want to be among those that understood and followed the deed in a way that we want to make sure that everyone is happy. And in that, we will do anything to support them in whatever situation a Muslim brother is, a Muslim sister is, we will be in that situation with them until we see them being happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us opportunity to understand and know how best we can help our fellow brothers and sisters in faith. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nishadu an la ilaha illa anta wa nastakfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah we take your questions now.